The Ioptron Skyguider Pro here is one of the most popular star trackers on the market, along with the Star Adventure. And one of the reasons that so many people use it is because you can do not only Milky Way photography with a wide angle lens, but deep space astrophotography with a telephoto lens or a small telescope. I've been using my Skyguider Pro for about three years now. It's done a great job, but there are a couple different problems with it. Namely, the latitude base is kind of flimsy. The declination bracket as a whole works pretty well, but some of the pieces can get in the way and make for an annoying night. And there's just a few other problems with it. So recently, William Optics, they're a third party company. They've released a bunch of different parts for the Skyguider Pro that really increase the usability if you're gonna use a telephoto lens. And that's what we're gonna be looking at in today's video. First, let's cover the problems with the Skyguider Pro. That way we can see how the William Optics parts will help with some of those problems. Now I've got a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens here. And on the bottom we have the little mounting bracket. So this circular piece, I actually kind of like it because this is the one that comes from Ioptron by default. There's just a little screw in here and you can screw this directly into your tripod collar on your telephoto lens. And it's just kind of nice because once this has been installed, you can just kind of forget it's there, pull your camera and lens out of the case, and then you just drop it right on like that, tighten it down, and you're ready to go. So from that point of view, I actually do kind of like the design. The only problem is you might notice my camera is mounted on the short end of the declination bracket. The long end is down here where my counterweights are. That's kind of the opposite of what some of their manuals and brochures show. And the reason I flipped everything kind of upside down is because I get much better balance. If my camera is lower down to the center of the star tracker, that means I need less counterweights to balance everything. And overall, it makes things easier. The problem with this though, is when I'm trying to find different objects in the sky, the screw here, or this one's gonna hit the screw here on the back. And when that happens, I can't go any further. So I have to usually pull this screw out and then put it in the third hole in the middle of the night. And that's always kind of frustrating. And that's one of the things that William Optics has solved with their base that's gonna to attach to your lens. So we're gonna take a look at that first, but that's my first problem with the Skyguider Pro and it's just kind of a minor annoyance really. And it's only because I set up my Skyguider Pro this particular route. But the other problem is that the screws here on the base and the knob here, when you turn them, very often you'll actually run out of space, which means if you're trying to do your polar alignment, you just get stuck and you can't go any further. So in my case, I have to pick up the whole tripod and move things. That's kind of a pain. And these adjustments also aren't very precise at all. So if I'm trying to adjust my altitude or my azimuth, the star will just jump up and down quite a bit and it's very hard to do precise adjustments. Finally, the last problem is that with the counterweight here, you can see I actually have two counterweights. And in this case, that's way too much weight because I don't have a bigger lens on here. There's no ball head and I don't have my guide scope and everything attached. But usually I will need these second counterweights. Now, William Optics, they released just a little tiny extension rod that screws onto the bottom of this counterweight rod. And when you do that, and we're gonna test this today, we're gonna to see if we can get away with a single counterweight rather than needing two. All right, so we talked about the few big problems with the Skyguider Pro. Next, I'm gonna swap everything out, show you the William Optics parts, and we'll go from there. Let's start off with the camera mounting block first. We have the William Optics in the red and the default Ioptron one in the black. Like everything from William Optics, the base here is noticeably larger and heavier than the default Ioptron one, but it also has a much better design overall. And just like the original, we just drop it right down on top and then we can tighten down the screw and now it's not going to go anywhere. If you have problems at this stage, you're not alone. Uh, it actually took me far too long to figure this out. If the base does not drop all the way down, it's probably because if you look inside here, there's like these little black rubber stoppers going around in a circle. And in my case, one was just very slightly tightened wasn't even visibly like protruding and that was preventing it from going all the way down. So what you need is just a small flathead screwdriver and make sure you loosen all of the little black screws around the 
circumference of the base. And now when you do that, it should drop right in uh, in case anybody else runs into that issue. But we can tighten this thing down and now we can attach our telephoto lens. And I've got the Tamron 150 to 600 here. Normally what I do is I take the base and install it directly to the lens. Like I said, I think that's a safer and easier way to do things. And then from here we can drop it on. And there we go. We'll tighten it down. Now we have a nice solid connection. You might actually notice though, as I turn it, there's a little bit of torque left and right, but that's because the four Allen screws in the Ioptron mount itself have come a little bit loose. So I need to tighten that after the video. It's not the base doing that. But there we go. Now we have our camera mounted. And the nice thing is I can rotate it, but I still have that same issue that we encountered before where when I finally get to that spot where the screws hit, I can no longer go any further. However, there's a big difference here because this is only one screw. With the Ioptron base, there's two screws, which the angle is kind of something like that, whereas this one is just obviously one screw. So realistically, the fact that they're hitting is not a problem anymore because the difference from there to there, you know, it's very minimal compared to the Ioptron where there's a lot more distance between where you get stuck, if that makes sense. But that's the first piece, that's the camera mounting block. It's not cheap. Again, anything from Liam Optics, it's usually not cheap. Do you need this piece? I think in most cases you do not need it. It's kind of overkill and the original base works well enough. Like I said, there's that little problem where you have the two screws hitting the back. It's a minor annoyance. If you're running into that problem too though and you're just over it and you got the money, then this is a nice upgrade. If you don't really have a problem like that though, I really don't see the need for this particular piece. It's nice, looks nice, but it's kind of overkill, especially I think it's like 75, 80 bucks. Not really worth the investment as far as I'm concerned. The next piece we're gonna look at is the extension rod from William Optics. This normally comes bundled with the base and I think it's only like 10 bucks extra. So we're gonna see just how well it works. The main reason you would need this extension rod is let's say you've got a setup similar to mine. You got a big telephoto lens, you've attached it directly to the short end of the declination bracket, but maybe you had to attach an auto guider as well to get better tracking results. So if we do all that and we make sure the counterweight's extended all the way, the camera is still just too heavy. So this is where the extension rod would come in handy because Without that, you'd have to spend about $25 or more on a secondary counterweight, which adds overall a lot more weight to the setup. So the counterweight rod is just going to install here on the bottom. If we unscrew the end cap here, you wanna make sure you don't lose this because uh, otherwise you might need it at some point in the future. But now we can just very easily install the extension and we should have no trouble now balancing our setup. And there we go. So it's actually right at the line of where the extension rod attaches. That's right where I need to be. So I was just barely over the edge with the camera weight. And there we go. We now have a balanced setup. And the extension rod for about $10, if you get the new base as well, is gonna save the day there. And overall, that should help with the overall balance because again, you don't have six pounds of counterweight, you only have three now. Although I guess in terms of leverage, it doesn't really matter. The point being, the extension rod does its job. Looks kind of funny with the red on the end, but who really cares? And for 10 bucks, again, in addition to the base, I think that's a worthwhile investment, especially if you do need that second counterweight, this might very well eliminate the need for that. So that's a great component. Next, we're gonna look at the new base, which is arguably the most important aspect of the William Optics upgrades, especially for deep space astrophotography. And here is the new William Optics base. You might be thinking, why the heck would you go with blue? But that's the only color they had available when I wanted to get this around Christmas. So that's what I got. Not really a big deal, but it doesn't really help with the color coordination. I've already got a full review though on the base. So if you wanna see that, go check out my YouTube video or check out the review on my website. Just to recap it very briefly, 
The base comes in two different versions, high latitude, low latitude. The high latitude is good from about 30 degrees to I think 60 degrees if I'm not mistaken. The low latitude is from like 7 degrees to 30 degrees roughly. However, regardless which base you buy, you can convert it by taking the base apart and moving a little stopper. There's a YouTuber out there who's got a video that'll show you how to do it. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'll link that in the description if you wanna check that out. The base itself is very nice, and it's a huge step up from the Ioptron base. Instead of having just a knob here to adjust the altitude, you have two screws, just like we have for the azimuth. So we can move it very precisely up and down, as well as left and right. And you also seem to have more uh, room to move either left or right because as I mentioned earlier with the uh, Ioptron base, very often I'd get very close to getting a perfect alignment but I couldn't turn the screws any further and I'd be stuck. So normally I'd have to pick up the tripod and move it. But this tends to give you a little bit more so if you get near the edge you can go just a bit further. At least that's the way it seems to be. Overall, it's a very high quality base. It's a little heavier obviously because it's solid metal. Ioptron base had some plastic in it. But it's not cheap. I think it's about $175, maybe $185 if you get that extension rod. So I would only recommend getting this base if you're going to be using a telephoto lens and doing deep space work when you need that extra precision. If you're doing like 100 millimeters and less, then this base is, in terms of both the heft, the size, and the price, I think it's overkill. So don't bother with it. But again, if you really want to get into deep base astrophotography, with a fairly small little tracker like the Sky Guider, or even the Star Adventure. Let's be clear, you can use this base with a Star Adventure if you have it. Uh, it'll just slide on just like normal. And that's really all there is to the base. There's not much more to talk about. Again, check out my full review if you're interested. It's a good base. It's big, it's heavy, it costs a lot of money, but it does its job very well. And there's one other component I got because I figured if I'm gonna pimp out the Sky Guider Pro, I might as well get everything William Optics has. And that is the optional telescope bracket, which you can install up here. And that'll give you apparently a more secure connection. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the Space Cat and we're gonna test the default Ioptron telescope bracket with the new William Optics one. This is the default Ioptron one right here. And the way it works is you just take the bracket here, you'll need the circular piece we looked at earlier, and you just plop it on top. And then you kind of have to line up the four holes there grab the screws that came with the kit, tighten all the screws down, and then at that point, you can put this up here and attach your telescope. The piece itself is pretty small and lightweight, which I like, but I never really even had any issues with it, to be honest. I mean, it's kind of short, so if you had a big telescope, maybe you'd find that to be an issue, but again, you're not gonna be using that big of a scope anyway with the Sky Guider Pro. So I really didn't feel the need to get an upgrade, but I figured, I can at least do this video and let you guys know how the pieces work and if it's worth the money or not. So I spent the money and bought it. And the William Optics piece here, we'll compare them side by side, is much bigger. And I don't know why, but it seems like they use the same giant knob for every one of their components. It's just overkill as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but the William Optics bracket, obviously much better designed, much larger and heavier. The one thing I do like about this though, is that if you get the camera mounting block as well, it's a very simple installation process. You got three screw holes here in the back, you can choose either one, and then you just screw in the base. That's all there is to it. Now you have a nice secure connection, you can plop it on and you're ready to go. Whereas if you remember with the William, uh, the Ioptron pieces, you had to get the four screws, and again, it's a minor inconvenience, but it gets annoying when you keep swapping back and forth like I tend to do. So for me, this is a nice change. However, uh, it's kind of overkill. Like I said, I never really even had any problems with the Ioptron piece. This thing is noticeably larger, it's heavier, and it costs, I think, at least 50, if not like $70. And for what you're getting, I don't really think that's worth the money at all. So uh, again, if you're gonna be getting the telescope mounting bracket, I recommend getting the camera mounting block as well because they pair great together and you'll have kind of a hard time using both of them if you don't have uh, the two pieces you need. So just to recap here at the end of the video and give you my recommendations, 
If you're gonna be doing a lot of deep space astrophotography with your SkyGuider Pro, or even the Star Adventure, if you have that tracker, both of those can use the William Optics base. Just make sure you choose high latitude or low latitude, and be sure to check out my full video review for more information. If you're just gonna be doing Milky Way photography though, or 100 millimeters and less, you know, so 14 millimeters, this base is overkill. And if you're gonna be taking it out in the field with you on a hike, you're much better off sticking with the Ioptron base because this is much bigger and heavier and I don't want to lug this thing around in the backcountry. So that's my final word on the base. If you're going to get the base though, make sure you get the counterweight rod. It's only like 10 extra bucks and for me that's probably my favorite upgrade just because instead of having to get a second counterweight and deal with all that extra heft, I can just slide it up and down very easily and achieve a perfect balance. So that's a nice simple solution. Finally, we have the new camera mounting block as well as the telescope mounting piece. I think both of these are overkill in terms of the size, the weight, and the price. This is nice, but you don't really need it. Even if you're like in my case where you had the screw hitting on the back with the Ioptron pieces, it's not that big of a deal. It gets annoying. I was really tired of it. But for how much money this thing costs, I don't really think it's worth the investment. Same with this thing. I never had a problem with the default Ioptron telescope mount and this is nice but you don't really need it unless you're using maybe like a William Optic Z73 that size of a telescope. So hopefully this video answered any questions you might have about the new components from William Optics. If you have any questions you can leave a comment and uh, that's really all I got for you today. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.